Hey guys, we're back again with this Lenovo B5030. So I've done a part one on this, which is video number 72 on this channel. And we're going to pick it up from where I was last week. So a quick synopsis of where we were. The symptoms were that it powers on, but it doesn't post and there's no display. So I observed that there was a spill on the Super I.O. chip, which is this chip here. And through the magic of technology, you will see me make that disappear right now. So I cleaned that up, I resoldered the pins, and it was still doing the same thing. So I checked the board, the main power rail is 20.32 volts, which is correct. The 1.8 volt, 3.3 volt, and 5 volt always on. They're all present. Uh, the 3.3 volt is present on the power button. It drops to zero when I press the power button. And after pressing the power button, the CPU seems to warm up, but still no display. I've also swapped the BIOS chip from another laptop that I have, which is the exact same model, conveniently. And it didn't make any difference. And the BIOS that I took from this one and put into the other laptop actually boots the other laptop. Then I checked the USB ports, the Ethernet ports, any other ports, and there was no damage on any of those. So right now, I'm lost. So this is where we're going to take it from. So follow along with the video and see if we all learn something. See, I can't see the wood for the trees at this stage. I've been talking about servers all week. So as you can see, I've made a mistake here. <laughs> so let me write that wrong before I try and write any wrongs with the laptop. Okay, let's go. One of the options that I looked at last week was to replace this Super I.O. chip right here. Why would I start with that? Well, this is where the spill was. Okay, so we had a spill across the four pins here. I've cleaned that off now, but there's no guarantee that this IC was not permanently damaged by whatever spilled onto the pins right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look around the components that connect to the pins of this IC, check for voltages, check for shorts, and just see is there uh, any issue with this. Okay, so I found where the Super I.O. is referenced in the schematic. As you can see here, there are a lot of pins on this one, so it's not feasible to check every single pin, but we're going to check some of the important ones and just see where we stand. There is actually 128 pins on this, but if you look at the top here, we have our 3.3 volts always on is coming down it's true a resistor to these one two three four five six pins there's six separate pins where the voltage comes on to this IC so we're going to check those pins uh, 125 111 96 33 22 and 9 so we should be finding 3.3 volts at all of these the other one that I'm looking at here is there is actually V18R and if we look at that in the schematic of the actual Super IO itself if I can find it it says that this is on pin 124 it's connected to an external capacitor for an internal 1.8 volt so it would be another sign that it's working if this 1.8 volts is being generated also so the pins that I need to check are well, any one of these pins here, I can check for the input voltage. We know our 3.3 volts always on is good, so I'm expecting to find 3.3 volts here. And we're expecting to find on pin 124 that we have 1.8 volts. So let's check that now. So with my multimeter in the volts DC range, in the 20 volt range, we're going to start taking some measurements. So I'm placing my black probe to ground, which is right here. And we're going to start taking some measurements with my red probe. So the first thing we're interested in here is to make sure our 3.3 volts always on is making it as far as our Super I.O. chip. We're pretty much guaranteed on what we've seen that this is the case, but I'm just going to verify it anyway. So we've six pins that this comes in on. They're all joined together. I'm going to check it on pin 125 because it's the most convenient. So if we zoom in here, we can see that pin 128 is here. So it's 128, 127, 126, 125. So 125 is here, and as you can see, there's a little track comes up, and I'm going to measure it from right here. So when I measure there, I find on 125 we have 3.3 volts. Now, that makes sure that we're getting the proper input voltage for our IC. Now down here on pin 124, that's where our V18R pin is. It happens to be right beside it. So I can check that here as well. So we have 125 is here. So this is obviously 124. So as you can see, if I zoom in a little further, that comes out here 
and onto this capacitor which is a far nicer place to measure it. And when I measure there, I find that there is 1.8 volts at that point. So that tells me that the internal, what do they call it again? The connected to external capacitor for internal 1.8. So the internal 1.8 volt is also working. Next, I just want to make sure that my Super IO chip is receiving the power button signal. So if we look at our schematic again, we can see on pin 122 is our power button out. So that's conveniently beside where the other pins are. So all I need to do is count down to number 122. So we know that this is 125 here. So 125, 124, 123. 3 and 1, 2, 2. So this is our power out button here. So I place my probe to this pin and without going near the power button I measure that there's 1.8 volts there. Now when I go to my power button and I press and hold the power button that 1.8 volts goes to 0 volts. When I release the power button again it goes back to 1.8 volts. So that confirms to me that our power button is working and our power button signal is making it the whole way to pin 122 of our Super I.O. I checked around the rest of the capacitors that are in this area of the Super I.O. chip and I found 1.8 volts on this capacitor here, 3.3 volts on this capacitor here, 3.3 on these and 3.3 on this capacitor here. So the main point about this is I'm not measuring any shorts anywhere around this Super I.O. So I think it's okay. I don't think I need to swap it for the moment. I'm going to move on to checking the rest of our secondary voltage rails and see if they are all online. I've gone back to the input section to start troubleshooting our secondary power rails. So this is the first little circuit I'm going to look at here. Now we do have a schematic here so I can show you what that does. PL602 which is this inductor right here corresponds to this inductor in the schematic. So as you can see this accepts B plus on its input. So B plus as we mentioned earlier is the 20.32 volts. That feeds onto PU602. PU602 is this IC right here. And on the output of PU602 we have 1.0 voltage always on power. So the purpose of this little circuit right here which I'm going to mark is to take our 20.32 volts input here and give us our 1.0 volts always on power on the output. So what I can do is I can measure, I'm still in volts DC, I'm getting a ground from our DC jack right here. I measure PL602 and I find that there is 20.32 volts on this as expected. So the next thing to check then is to check is the output of that IC also correct. So where I can measure that is on this big inductor here. So I place my probe to the other side of the inductor and I find that there is one volt on this. So the first of our secondary power rails are 1.0 volt always on power is present and working. Moving across the board we see this grouping of components here which is another one of our secondary power supplies. So I'm going to mark that section just to make it easier for you to see it. So these components correspond to this part of the schematic here. So you'll see PL501 which corresponds to our input inductor here. So what it's saying is that B plus or 20.32 volts should be present on this inductor. That feeds onto a high side low side MOSFET configuration which I presume corresponds to these two here. These two are controlled by this IC and then on the output we should have 1.35 volts which is probably for our RAM. So the first check I can do is I check this input inductor here and I find that there is 20.32 volts on this and then on the output which is this inductor right here PL502 we find that there is 1.39 volts so that corresponds to our 1.35 volts. It's a little bit bigger but that's fine. So this circuit is also working. I've moved down on the board and we're going to look at this section right here again. So if we search the schematic for PJ601 I find that that's here. And I'm just going to mark out again that little section of the board. So we've got this section here and I'm going to mark that out because I think it helps when you take it in smaller sections because if you zoom out on the board 
it can make it look like it's you know this mass of components that have no association with each other but when you break it down and just mark off the different sections like I've done here it can make it a bit more manageable so this is the section we're speaking about here these components correspond to the components here so on PJ601 which is this com it, well, it's not a component it's just a jumper right here we should have 3.3 .3 volts always on once again measuring in volts DC I take a measurement here and I find that there is 3.3 .3 volts at this section which is correct so what we need to know is is this chip giving us our 1.8 volts always on power on the output and we can measure that output on PL601 so PL601 is this component here so I place my probe to the other side of that and I measure there and I find that there's 1.8 volts there so that section is good too this is our processor right here and if I move down you'll see that there is two inductors and I think these are the two inductors that carry the power for this processor right here but let's mark out the section that we're describing so the main IC involved in this is PU901 and if I go down through my schematic I find PU901 now looking a bit closer at PU901 that has like phase lower gate upper gate lower gate phase upper gate so this IC controls two dual MOSFETs, this one and this one. Now they're actually on the other side of the board, but the important thing here is the output of those two dual MOSFETs are the top one is PL902 and the bottom one here, PQ902, the output is on PL903. So all we need to do is just measure and see if those voltages are present. So again with my black probe on ground I place my red probe to PL902 first and I find on PL902 that we have where is it we have 0 0.82 volts now that is marked as being where is the PL902 plus SOC underscore VNN and when I look that up in the voltage rails it describes that as GFX for SOC the PL903 when I measure there I find that there is 0.917 volts on this and that corresponds to this one here PL90 sorry not PL901 it corresponds to PL903 which is described as SOC underscore VCC and when I looked that up on my voltage rails in a schematic that's described as the core voltage for SOC now I'm not a hundred percent what these are meant to be because it just describes these by uh, I'll show you it describes them by name but it doesn't for some reason tell you what they should be do these vary or what is it I'm not sure but it would be so much more useful for me to have the actual value so I could compare them. However I do have another more motherboard and I can compare them to those. But look for this moment I'm getting a stable 0 0.82 volts on this inductor and a 0 0.917 stable on this. So for the moment I'm going to presume that they're correct. Just a quick note here, before moving on from the measurement of the voltage on these two coils, I powered off the laptop, set the digital multimeter to resistance mode, and I took a resistance reading at both of these coils as well so that I can compare it to the other laptop, and I'll do that later on. Of course, is our bias battery right here, so I took a measurement here, and I found, as you can see, that there was 3 volts on the bias battery, which is fine. Continuing to scroll around, I measured 5 volts down here beside the USBs and one thing I wanted to try was to plug something into these to make sure that they were, you know, not damaged. I took a good look at them and it didn't look like they were damaged, but with this laptop pressed on and seemingly powering on, I plugged in two USB devices and they powered on fine, so there's no issue with the power to these. So working my way up again we see you see we're back to where we were last week these are the 3.3 volt and 5 volt always on I've confirmed that these are working already from last week's video so at this point you can see what I'm trying to do with measuring all the secondary power rails so what I decided to do was given that I wasn't seeing anything wrong here I decided to get that table from earlier on and just mark in every single voltage it's a bit painstaking but that's what I decided to do so I'm going to show you the chart and the list of all of the voltages of what they're meant to be and the list of all of the voltages that I took from this board. 
So this is the full list of voltages on this board. I've got this from the schematic as well. So as you can see, anything I've marked in yellow is all good. And I've just written down where I actually measured them. Uh, which component, just in case I need to go back to it. Now, obviously, there's no battery came with this, so I can't measure the battery voltage. That shouldn't be a big deal. It should work. Everything should work fine on just the power adapter with the battery plugged out. The two that were a bit ambiguous were the two inductors that I pointed out earlier on because it didn't actually give me a value for these and I've written in here the values that I measured. So I measured 0 0.917 volts at PL903 and I measured 0 0.82 volts at PL902. But as you can see, every other power rail was perfect. Okay, I mentioned already that I repaired one of these Lenovo B5030s a couple of videos back. It had a big uh, short on the main power rail. Once I removed that, I then had a working motherboard. So I'm able to compare the values from that to this board. It's exactly the same. So we don't have to compare any of the ones in yellow because they are all as they should be. They've all measured exactly as they should be. So the only two that I'm a bit ambiguous about are these two here. We weren't given numeric values, so I'm going to compare these to the working laptop. So the measurement at PL902, this inductor right here, I was measuring 0 0.82 volts on the non-working laptop. And when I powered it off, I took a resistance measurement and I measured 30.8 ohms. On my working laptop, I measured... 0 0.8 volts, very, very stable. And when I powered it off and checked the resistance reading, it was approximately the same. It was 30 ohms. For PL903 on my non-working laptop, I measured 0 0.917 volts. And when I plugged it out and took a resistance measurement, it measured 29.2 ohms. For my working laptop, I measured the same PL902 when it was up and running and I got a very stable 0 0.940 volts. When I plugged it out and took a resistance measurement, it measured 24 ohms. So I think that there is something wrong with the CPU on this laptop. And unfortunately, as you know, we cannot, you know, there's no sockets on these anymore. I can't, you know, lift up the little arm, lift out the processor and try the processor from the other laptop, which would be so handy in this type of situation, but it's just something that's not available to us anymore. Um, and because it's such a job to remove this, that basically is the end of life for this motherboard. So that's where I'm going to leave this one. As you can see, I've put a lot of work into taking down all the measurements for this. It's pretty painstaking, but I guess you got to serve your hours to try and learn something with this type of motherboard. Um, if you've got any suggestions or any other way that I could take this, please write it in the comments below. But unfortunately, that is the end of life for this laptop motherboard at this present moment. Please like and subscribe, and I'll be back with something interesting. Oh, my multimeter's dying. I'll just let it have its moment there. I'll be back with something hopefully better and more interesting next week. Please like and subscribe, and post any comments that you have down below, because I'm always interested to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks.